everybody, welcome back to another Floxy Live for Enchanted Fairy Tale Forest virtual event. Um, today we're going to be talking to Maggie from Yarnaceous Fibers. Um, so hopefully her internet will work. All right, she's all ready to go. So let's do this. Let me let me pull her in. Things. Hi everybody. I hope everybody's having a great day. It is Tuesday. Oh. Hey hey hey. Hi, let me switch the camera so you're not looking out my back window. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Good morning. Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's, uh, it's a little chilly over here today. Um, I think it was raining earlier, which, you know, it's all, all for the, the winter fairy tale vibes over here. So that's exciting. Yes, it is. It's really cold here too, but no rain or snow, just freezing. <laughs> Nice. Where are you located again? I'm in Lake Point, Utah, which is west okay. of Salt Lake City. Yeah, nice, nice. I knew you were, like, over there, but I wasn't quite sure where. Um, yeah, I am, like, around yeah. the mountain, so there's a mountain range between me and Salt Lake. Ooh, so, that's so nice. Geez. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, like, a, a small lot? town, but only a few minutes yeah. from an actual city, which is nice. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how, how are you? How's your day going? It's going really good, other than the lack of internet. That's always fun. I had plans this morning to do a bunch of shipping, and so that'll be later, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they'll get, they'll get you. They'll get you all yeah. situated, and you can get to working. Um, so how was, I know that you went to Rhinebeck. Hey, Sammy. Um, you went to Rhinebeck and you did Woolen Folk. How, how was it? How was your experience? It was so much fun. Like, I Good. am already booked for next year, not for Woolen Folk, nice. obviously, but for Rhinebeck because it was just, yeah. it was surreal. Like, you hear about it and how amazing it is, but until you actually go, you don't actually know. So, was yeah. Was that your first time? It was. I had never gone before. So oh, it was really crazy that. awesome. Yeah, it was really nice. You were actually the first person that said hi to me at Cake Palooza. So yes. I was like, yes, I was like, oh, there's Maggie. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, I need to grab a photo with her before she leaves. And then it never happened. So next, next year for sure. Yeah. Exactly, next year, yeah, because it was like, we got there. And we were just hurrying and setting up my friend's booth since I was all ready to go. And I yeah. saw you and I was like, this is so awesome, but I have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Did you at least get to um, experience like the first ticket sale? Like the first, uh, the first uh, wave of, of Cake Palooza? Or did you have to no, leave right they now? were all lined up when I was leaving. So they were like getting ready to go in. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm like, next time? If you're not doing wool and folk, hopefully you will, because I always want yes. the best for all my friends. Um, but if you're not, you should come and hang out. I think it would be super fun to have you as part of like the, the group. Totally, that would be awesome. Yeah, and if not, happen. hopefully I can like make it to the roller skating party. I was so sad I couldn't this year. Yeah. So aim for that to be like on a Saturday. I would love it to be on a Saturday after uh, after Rhinebeck, but I think I think the roller skating rink is the reason why we have to go with the date that they provide us. Um, yeah, but Saturday would we're have been actually special. like oh, we're actually like in Saugerties next year. Our house, so oh, nice. the house this year is an hour away, and so oh, it wow. was like okay, we have an hour drive back and an hour drive in. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. We people don't realize that, like, it's so far away, you know? Yeah. On a map, it looks close, but yeah. once you actually get there, it is not. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. But the drive really isn't that bad because you get to see, like, all of, like, the peak fall foliage, um, yes. which is always great at that time of year. It's always beautiful. It is. And there was a spot, like, we randomly pulled off the road because there's this like rest stop area but it doesn't say anything and we're like this is yeah. gorgeous you just look out and you see all of this foliage and yeah. this guy pulls up and he's like isn't this so cool you can see five states 
And so what? we looked it up and yeah, there's this pull off on one of the roads and you can just see five states from that pull off and it's just foliage. It's so gorgeous. That is so cool. I didn't know right? that. Yeah. You'll have to look it up next time or like yeah. you could just go probably drive to it with where you're located. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. It was about an hour and a half out of Socrates, but yeah. between Albany and Socrates, so. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. We'll definitely have to look it up next year because that would be such a cool, fun, like, finish object photo shoot area, you know? For sure. Yeah. Or even to, like, photograph your Rhinebeck sweater because did you, did you knit a Rhinebeck sweater this year? I knit half of, well, yeah, I did because okay. I had my strata tee by Tiffany Allen. I don't know if it was actually like a Rhinebeck sweater, but it was the did one you, I knit for it. So. Did you, did you wear it to Rhinebeck? I did. Then it's a I Rhinebeck. It Saturday? Yeah, then it's a Rhinebeck sweater. <laughs> there's okay, no perfect. Official, there's, there's no official, official Rhinebeck sweater. It's just the sweater that you knit for Rhinebeck. That's the sweater that it is. All right, well, that and a love note and nice. a Fonda. Yes. So I have three. <laughs> nice. I just have the one, but mine was epic. It had beads on it. Um, I did the, uh, the cowgirl crop by um, Marl. She is knitting ruin my life. And um, I put beads and I made my, because it's uh, cowgirl hats and cowboy boots or cowgirl boots. Um, and I did like a little design for the cowboy boots yeah and I oh them. that's cool mm -hmm. it was so fun um but yeah so let's let's get into all the things about Foxy. so okay can you, perfect can you uh for the people who don't know you or the people that are just joining can you tell us who you are and what you do yes i am maggie of yarnaceous fibers and i'm located in the utah the utah <laughs> usa <laughs> <laughs> I dye mostly dinosaur themed items, which is great because I can do pretty much whatever I want. Um, but it's dinosaur themed. So my color rays are after dinosaurs or locations of dinosaurs, which um, is what my color rays for flocks here are going to be, which is going to be kind of fun. Um, and yeah. I source my yarn. It mostly comes from the UK, which it's Australian wool, and it is spun in Italy and the UK, and then all what? the way to Utah. That's so <laughs> fancy, Maggie. <laughs> I know. It's world-traveled yarn. It is. That's epic. <laughs> um, what's been going on with you since our last chat? Um, well, obviously, Rhinebeck, and then um, Advents. I'm packing Advents right now to go out and then I what have like my five week countdown. Ooh, what is yep. your advent theme if you don't mind me asking? So my main advent, which is the contemporary is Dinotopia. And so it's 24 minis and they're all after dinosaurs in the book Dinotopia by James Guernsey, which my designer, Mary Hunt, she designed a cute little dinosaur stocking mm -hmm. and she was doing research and realized James Guernsey is actually in Rhinebeck. That is where he lives. So it was kind of like a fun little knitting related thing. Ooh, so, I love that. Yeah. I love when little coincidences like that happen. It just makes me so happy. Right? I'm like, next year maybe I can go find his house and hold up the knit stocking out of the Dinotopia dinosaurs yarn. And <gasps> that would be fun. Yes. yes. Please do that. Please do I that. Will. Um all right. I did see that you released a sock pattern with Fangirl Fibers for her cryptid box. Um, how did that come did. about? So Emily was looking for designers back in Mayish or something. And I was like, I'll do something. I have never designed a sock before, but I have knit okay. so many, like 50 or so socks. Mm -hmm. And so it was just fun, like trying to find a cryptid. And I settled on the jackalope because that was like in Utah you always go out in the mm -hmm. desert and look for your jackalopes. And I like just found a black and white image. I actually went through about four or five before I settled on the one I used and turned into a color work chart. And then I love texture and just like random things. So with the sock, I wanted like a gauntlet style 
And that's where that texture at the top cup came from, and then the toes too. Awesome. Um, have, you, have you designed any other patterns since, since our last chat? Um, nope, but I do have one on the needles that I'm designing for a fundraiser that will start in January with Gary Knits, Gary Rides on Instagram. So I'm working on that. And then I have a couple of other ones, like a Colorwork cowl and um, another pair of socks. When so that, those will be coming out later this year or early January. Awesome. When that knit along happens, please let us know. We would love to share about it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll be yeah. releasing kits here in the next couple of weeks. So everyone will be ready to go January 1st. Nice. All right. Yeah. Are you ready for my for my fairy tale questions? Yes. Okay. What is your favorite fairy tale? Cinderella. But I also have to go back to like the core of folklores and fairy tales because I took a few classes in college. Okay. And I love going into the like where they actually came from. So like changelings came from back in like Europe where a family would have a deformed baby and blame it on the changelings. And so they'd mm -hmm. sadly go leave it in the forest to get their real baby back. So oh, no. I like the actual like in depth, like where did this come from? Like Part a of fairy tales. It? Yep. Nice. But yeah, Cinderella is definitely my favorite. Nice. I love that. Um, what is your ideal fairy tale color palette? Ooh, so we are just gonna go right into it. All right, perfect. <laughs> this is one of my colorways. I have notes. This is Castle Hain, and that's off of the Castle Hain Formation okay. out in North Carolina. And so I did this one with like little specks of lime and chartreuse and then plum. So mm -hmm. that will be Castle Hain, and I'll start revealing these on my Instagram today. <gasps> Yay! I'm excited. So, I do a fairy tale, and I would love this, like, in a color work cowl with black. Yeah. So, like, my little or... tar pit or I'm... Um, hematite. I'm thinking of, like, a deep, dark purple. Ooh, that would be good, too. So, right. I had this, like, random idea this morning, and I wanted diatonals to go with this. So, maybe I'll do a deep, dark purple. Ooh, Yes. What um what weight of yarn are you dyeing these on? So this is um, DK that the swatches knit on. Okay. And then I have, so dyed up, I have my Salta Fingering Base. Okay. And then the Bronto DK. And this is my Titano Bulky. I wanted to dye it on Bulky because it's getting really cold and it makes quick hats or yeah. quick sweaters even. This is a bulky weight. Well, it's double DK and it's a, so it's bulky weight and I knit it in seven knitting days. It took like a week and a half, but I didn't knit for like four or five days of that week and a half. So I was just about to ask you, what is a knitting week? Is it just like the days that you knit? Yep. Okay. So you don't count the days you don't knit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. I do the same thing. I'm like, I didn't knit today. So how many days did it actually take me? Yeah, I do exactly. the same. Thing. I do the same. Yeah, so like a swatch takes me like an hour of knitting time. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad to get knit a swatch no. in an hour. Probably not bad at all. No, it's pretty quick. Unless I did fingering, that would take like two hours probably. So oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, what was what was it? Oh, if you could rewrite the ending of any fairy tale, which would you choose and why? Well, that's a good one. Um, Little Red Riding Hood, maybe. Okay, what would you change about it? I think the wolf would get her. Like, <laughs> yeah, like no, because, no. Saving. Yeah, a little kid out in the forest with a wolf. Like, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> that wolf isn't nice. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Can we talk a little bit about your vendor session? You did share what you were bringing, um, and you're also doing a demo for us. So if you wanted yes. to chat about that as well. All right. So I have actually five other colorways. Okay. Then let's do it. Um, so I did 
so they're all enchanted, but they're also dinosaur dig sites to stick with my whole okay. um, theme. So this is enchanted desert, essentially. And I'm kind of looking over at my note here. Um, mm -hmm. This is bone cabin quarry. <gasps> Maggie. And I don't have swatches for all of them, but so this is like yeah. a deep red. And then you've got that light purple with like a purpley brown. Yeah. And this is out of Laramie White. And I shared to my stories, um, there is actually a cabin up by this that paleontologists built like a hundred years ago. And the outside of this cabin is all fossils, which is kind of cool. I have Ooh. not heard of that. So field trip for next cool. year. Um, yeah. And then sure. this one was cool because one of the first dinosaurs they found at it is the Gargoylesaurus. So like a Gargoylesaurus. Yeah. It's like a dinosaurus, so essentially. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Bone Cabin Quarry, Enchanted Desert. And then the second one, or yeah, third ish. <laughs> this is Enchanted <laughs> Plains. <gasps> so, you can see the blues with little bits of green in there. Yeah. And then there's our swatch. Ooh. And so, this is after the Cloverleaf Formation, and mm -hmm. that is in all across like Wyoming, Montana, uh, Colorado, and Utah. And it's famous for titanosaurs. So they are also called earth shakers and they shake the earth when they walk or when they walked. That's how big they were. So they were like giving their own little earthquakes. Yeah, that's so crazy. Right? Could you imagine something so big the earth shakes when it walks? Like, no, nope. that's huge. <laughs> See, and then, um, imagine that. That's crazy. Right? So this guy doesn't have a swatch, but okay. this is my enchanted forest. <gasps> so I kind of strayed from greens on this Yeah. for a couple of reasons. I found one with, like, really deep foliage, a photo to go off of. So you've got, like, Ooh. dark blue in there and deep red. And this is off of the Joggins Fossil Cliffs. And... <laughs> it's cliffs, but it is one of the first sites they found that in Canada where they were able to prove that it used to be like a rainforest. And it's definitely not a rainforest now in Canada. So that yeah. was kind of a cool little find. That's and so then cool. this I'm one like, is I'm so. Already make mental notes of which ones I want to buy. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then I'll, I'll share them all on my page. Um, I have the two swatches left in it. This is one of them. Um, and so I'll share them all with their names and a little bit of information. So anybody who wants Perfect. to look into that. Um, this is North York Moors, which I had a girl send in a custom color request. Well, she had posted it to her stories and I'm like, I'll dye that for you. And so mm -hmm. I dyed it up and I've decided to finally release it as like an official color. So <gasps> North York Moors, Enchanted Moors, is nice. out of the UK. And it's famous for dinosaur footprints or trace fossils. <gasps> that's so cool. So that's a layered green with hints of brown in there, which is a good yeah. Christmas green. It is. And then our last new one is Dinosaur Cove. So this is our actual enchanted shore. Ooh. And it is out of Victoria, Australia is where um, Dinosaur Cove is. Okay. And it is famous for the first dinosaur fossil found in Australia. So Ooh, that's cool. So I love the fun color. Yeah, I love how everyone really takes the theme and really makes it fit their their brand and their their you know yarn dyeing style because girl, chef's kiss, it's so good. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's the best. And then I will have mini sets. Oh, yes. So, um, this will not include the Castle Hain because it kind of doesn't vibe. But yeah. Castle Hain will have a mini set of its own for mm -hmm. something I'll be talking about on my grid tomorrow that will have to do with my demo. So that's okay. So, yes. All right. Talk a little bit about your demo now that we've seen all of the amazing colors that we need to save up for. Perfect. <laughs> So you're um, 
a color work demo for us. Yes. And so I'm going to focus on two patterns in my demo. This nice. is the Holiday Doodle. And so oh. this is the finished one I've knit. This is by Jamie Lomax. Lomax. She is PNW Knitter. And oh. she does these fun doodle cows. Right now she is doing a Holiday Doodle knit along. So if anyone wants to get yarn and cast on, they can join in on that fun. Ooh, and this pattern is great because you get to pick your charts in the order they're in and mm. just have fun with it. Plus, she has three options. So this is just a single-sided, but she has a double-sided, so you can knit it double. And then she has the infinity oh. option. So that part's really great. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other pattern, which I'm currently working on, is this one. And this is the Fossil mm -hmm. Frenzy by Mary Hunt. And so it has all these fossils. You can see my stegosaurus emerging right now. Yeah. So I'll be talking about like ways to hold your yarn and then like in your pattern or chart, how to break it up. So you yeah. know like where you want to do your, your little grabbies. I'm gonna call them right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see like on the inside of there, how neat it is. Yeah. That's interesting because I, I think I've only knitted color work when it's like a repeat. I've never really knit something where it's like just one whole complete image. So I really appreciate right. that you're going to be talking about how to break that up. Yeah. Yes, because like this is two pages of one chart and mm -hmm. it goes all the way around with no repeats. So that part's fun. Her sweater that's the Fossil Frenzy, you actually will repeat the chart around a couple of times, but this okay. one you don't. So, yeah. yeah, where this is little teeny 24 stitch repeats. So mm -hmm. it's fun to have the two different floats. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's so fun to have like the two different options and figure out how to break it up on your pattern and not get confused. Yeah, for sure. What do you love about color work? I like that I have to actually pay attention while I'm knitting and so I can enjoy the process more. Like I love stockinette because you can knit and you can pay attention to TV or you can be reading a book or just doing random things. But color work, you actually have to dive in and pay attention and be there with your knitting, mm -hmm. which is a lot more fun in ways, but both have their benefits. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, that's all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie, for joining me. It's so great. I'm glad the internet stayed up um, and we could actually have yes. this conversation. So thank you for the little things. Um, if you want to join Maggie for her session, it's going to be November 18th from 1.30 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then you can hop over to the demo channel for her amazing color work techniques um, demo. And it's going to be from 4.30 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so if you get tickets or when you get tickets, um, if you buy a class or a class package, um, you automatically get access to the marketplace, which gives you access to all the demos and vendor sessions. So um, thank you so much, Brittany. That was awesome. Um, so you'll have access to all of the demos and vendor sessions. And if you buy the extra recorded content, you'll have two weeks to look over and rewatch um, Maggie's amazing demo. And you have an extra two weeks to buy all of her amazing colors that I am Right, I'm gonna put them in my notebook and I'm gonna figure out which ones I want and what projects I want them for um, because they are amazing, especially that last purple one that you showed. Like, literally, my jaw hit the floor and I can't wait. Yep, so good. <laughs> my favorite. Um, thank so, you. thank you guys. For us. Uh, we will see you in a couple of days and um, we will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you for your time, and we appreciate you watching this video. To learn more, visit Floxy.com.